going all in online, or as you'll hear quite a few times, the online classroom is a force multiplier and there are opportunities in a virtual classroom that far surpass the in-person experience. But before we get into the substance, let me say good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are and whenever you are watching this presentation. My name is Kurt Mabus and joining me today is my colleague, Major Chase Gunnell. Chase and I are lawyers by trade and serve in the Air Force Judge Advocate General's Corps. We currently teach a variety of topics at the United States Air Force Academy in the Department of Law. If you know anything about legal education, you know that lawyers rely heavily on the Socratic method and lots of classroom discussion. We mimic that here at USAFA and focus our efforts on engaging our cl cadets in class discussions as we dissect cases and statutory law in an effort to build critical readers and critical thinkers. Admittedly, it's hard to recreate those class discussions online. In fact, we found that recreating most of the in-person classroom was frustrating and felt like a fool's errand. It's that realization, one I'm sure many of you share, that became the genesis of our recent planning and the subject of this presentation. Simply put, the virtual classroom doesn't replicate the in-person experience, but the online environment can actually make your class better. Chase will provide a little more background on the Air Force Academy then we'll briefly cover a couple of great online opportunities we found, as well as some planning considerations we focused on. Last March, the United States Air Force Academy, or USAF as we call it, like the rest of the world was hit by the global pandemic. The United States Air Force Academy, however, was faced with two unique challenges. First, we were required by law to graduate our students in 47 months. That means that we couldn't just take the semester off and send our cadets home. Secondly, is our mission, the mission of the United States Air Force Academy, is to educate, train, and inspire men and women to become leaders of character, motivated to lead the Department of the Air Force in service to our nation. We need to figure out how to teach the material while still giving our cadets meaningful opportunities to grow and become leaders of character. Not only teaching, but creating leaders required us to think outside the box. You're reading the slide and seeing breakout groups and understanding that those are nothing new. But I want you to break out of the way you think about breakout groups. Instead of the occasional breakout room that has a mixed amount of success and leads to blank stares, we reconceptualized our entire class. Now, instead of a large class all learning the same thing, we took that same class and created multiple smaller classes that meet at the same time. Some quick background, our core law course covers a variety of substantive laws. Fourth Amendment search and seizure, Fifth Amendment protection against self-incrimination, First Amendment freedom of religion, speech, and equal protection, and the UCMJ, to name a few. These topics, among others, are covered over 40 lessons, which means we go an inch deep and a mile wide. It's a lot of fun for most instructors and students, but the lessons move quickly and the class can sometimes feel like a roller coaster. Now. We want to create law firms of four to five students who will spend the first half of the semester becoming subject matter experts in one area of law. These student groups will be concurrently learning their subject matter while the instructor can move amongst the rooms assessing and leading discussion as necessary. For example, the instructor can lead a class discussion about the criminal law topic while the Fourth Amendment students are researching, the free speech students are working on a class presentation, and the Fifth Amendment crew is debating amongst themselves. The diversity of these experiences just couldn't be replicated in an in-person class. This is, at first, a daunting prospect. Trying to teach or wrangle four classes at one time. We'll talk about some of the planning consideration at the end of this presentation, but to foreshadow a little bit, consciously creating the environment and reinforcing your expectations will equate to success. This structure has a threefold benefit. First. In the military, we call this setup a force multiplier, a factor or combination of factors that provides the ability to accomplish greater feats than without it. In other words, you can do so much more with the same amount of time. Second, the students have more ownership in their learning. By the nature of the law firms, the instructor can't be in the room at all times, so the students have to be engaged in their own learning. This reinforces the leadership concepts that Chase talked about. And third, it provides more quality time with our cadets as the instructor engages with a smaller group and can more easily assess individual students' needs. Or subtext, it's harder for struggling students to hide or rely on other students. 
This is a quick example that works for our class. The point though, is that you have so much more flexibility in what you want your class to look like. Now, we'll look at some ways you can help your students to better prepare before they get into your new classroom. The second adjustment we made was to introduce thought questions into our syllabus and lesson plans. And by thought questions, I mean questions that are specifically designed to apply the material in the reading assigned for the day without spoon feeding the information. In other words, I give them a deeper level thought question that requires them to apply the material from the reading to answer a question. Over the past two semesters since I've implemented these thought questions into my syllabus and lesson plans, I found three main benefits. The first main benefit from using thought questions is that we signal to our cadets or our students what is most important. As Colonel Mavis mentioned, our basic survey course is required by every cadet. And that means that we get cadets who are interested in studying the law, but also cadets who want nothing to do with studying the law. For most, however, this is their first class dedicated to studying the law, and it can be daunting and overwhelming at times. Given the relative uneasiness that most cadets have when they start reading our, for our class, I found that these questions help direct our cadets to the most crucial points in the reading. Secondly, these thought questions give our students the ability to interact with the material before class at a deeper level. So I ask my students to read the questions before they, they do the reading for the day, and then do the reading and then try and answer the questions at the end. And if they can't answer the questions at the end of the reading, then they need to go back and do it again. This again, these questions give the students the ability to apply what they learned in the reading to a deeper level thought question. The last thought or the last benefit for thought questions is this idea of advancing or, or, or giving advance notice to our quieter students. We've all been in classes where two where we have two or three students dominate the discussion. It isn't that the other students uh, don't want to participate. It's that they don't know where the conversation is going or they don't have time to formulate answers. And so by providing these thought questions beforehand, you're signaling to these quieter students where the conversation is going and what questions will be asked in the middle or, or during the classroom discussion. And so I found that by signaling to the students and by giving these thought questions, they get to interact at a deeper level, but it also evens the playing field so that every student has the ability and the opportunity to respond to questions during the classroom discussion. And here are a few, or a, a few thought questions that I have in my syllabus, uh, just to give you examples of what type of questions we use here at, at USAFA to help signal to cadets uh, what is important and also where the, the classroom discussion is going to go. All students and instructors know what a classroom is supposed to look like. And but for instructor nuances, the brick and mortar classes all look and feel the same. Online classes, however, have to be created. Not out of thin air, but in thin air. That means the structure of discussion, expectations, and norms all have to be planned for, discussed, established, and reinforced during the first couple of meetings. Here are some planning considerations that we focused on with a special thanks to another colleague, Major Wolfgang Weber, whose related article, Surviving or Thriving, will be published on teachingprofessor.com in the next couple of months. The best part about these questions is there's no wrong answer. It's your opportunity to create the experience you want you and your students to have. These expectations are going to be much more involved than any other class, but that's because you're creating your perfect classroom. It might take a full page to list out all the details you want, but the more thought you put into this before you log on for the first time, the better your experience will be. And we found that reinforcing the expectations early and often help create the virtual boundaries for your students and will in turn lead to more positive experiences. The online environment is a force multiplier. Our experience is that if you treat it the same as a normal classroom, it's going to feel like a second-rate experience. But if you brace the technology and go all in online, you'll find there are teaching opportunities and learning experiences that can make the in-person experience pale in comparison. Here's what we talked about today. We hope your time with us was worthwhile and you were able to find a nugget or two to benefit your online planning considerations.